I have been inspired, as I am always by Van Gogh, um, this book of his drawings here, wonderful show that was at the Met a few years ago, uh, is possibly, for me, one of the most amazing books. There, there are also paintings and, um, we'll have to get that to this later, thank you. Um, <coughs> But the impulse of the brush is a phrase used about Van Gogh, um, though he himself said, drawing is the root of everything. And another couple of statements in this book. Um, one, he strove to capture the sizzle of his own gaze. And I think these, these phrases are, are wonderful, you know, even if they don't really go into your own head uh, personally, your style or whatever, but you can adjust it. And the impulses that charged his pen simply took over when he loaded his brush so that he delivered paint to canvas in dynamic graphic strokes. Paint to canvas. Drawing, too. And he drew memorably with, especially with, in, later in his life, which was so short. His painting career was so short and so fruitful. It's extraordinary. But um, the uh, reed pen, which he would sometimes putatively carved for reeds that he found in the fields. Um, and different size, different everything. So my thoughts for today are um, about the, you can read it, I won't read it all, um, about the drawn line or the painted line give not only contour, but direction, um, value, texture, what else do I say, and color. That book in its muted color is so colorful. He gets the color out of, uh, out of the fields, out of whatever he's painting, by stroke, by changing things, changing the weight. And so my suggestion, if you want to do the exercise, is to um, t either take a <coughs> photograph or whatever you might find over there, or a Van Gogh reproduction, which is also there, and just do this little brush exercise. Um, last week we talked about the uh, uh, just using one brush and, and working with uh, the potential of one brush, the flat, the edge, the changing it and using just the one brush. Um, if you do this little exercise, you might find that it's going to make you pick different brushes. Uh, you might have a little brush. You might then have a big fat brush. You might, uh, you might have a flat brush. And you, or you might use just one, which is just fine. Um, I, I did, just when I was, um, believe it or not, this is where Jan, you should show your piece. Uh, Jan and I did the same picture from Van Gogh. Mine is very different from Jan's, which is just a wonderful forgery, not quite, no it isn't at all. It's an interpretation. It's an interpretation, but it is, uh, you know, just very, very different, just beautifully, but the, but the change of weight of her brush, see, these are just the same. But what, what happens, uh, what happens is the, um, the, different, the different weight of stroke, um, she's used a, more color. What I did was to use, um, I made a point of using um, just two pigments in a very unmixed wash. And, and I'm not really mixing this thoroughly. I, I'm letting the two um, pigments just um, sort of sit together so that when you put it down, and I'm going to use this now, when I put down a, um, a stroke, it will still contain both elements and so and I'll see if I can just vary my my weights here um, so the impulse of the brush I'm not trying to create every single thing but the impulse of the brush of as as you go backward in this field these changing rows change your brush if you wish um, It's changing, the dimensions of the field are changing.
I'm trying to keep the word impulse into my head. And I am trying to think about spatial recession so that the strokes are getting a little bit lighter and a little bit um, uh, smaller. Then when I, change, when I get to a whole change of subject in the middle ground here, I pick up a different motif, but again, trying to, trying to just be, be what I'm painting, you know, the, the, the back line here, the tree. I have to go up maybe a uh, thicker. I'm not trying to create a beautiful painting the way Jan did. I'm more trying to get the, um, the action in, in the subject so that then when I get up to the sky, again, rhythm, impulse, and it's possible you could turn this into I, I'm continuously going back to change the amount of water to get a paler thing. Okay, here is my When you do this, you will see what happened to Van Gogh as he progressed. If you probably know this, but the, the, the most intense and Van Goghy identified period was probably 1889-90. And in that period, uh, it almost makes me cry thinking of how much he did. Um, that was so good. It wasn't just that he did a lot, it was extraordinary. And, um, it became more and more, if you look through that wonderful book that Beth is looking at, it became more and more uh, this kind of impulse of the line following very uh, exotic books, so it felt like that. So that, that's channeling Van Gogh. Uh, so that's my Van Gogh, uh, it's not a Van Gogh, but it's a sort of, well, it, no, it isn't. It's not a bingo. Um, but what, what I am looking for is that using the line, I hope, think there's another phrase in here, because these, these, but the, everything you do with your brush, or a pen, a reed pen, or more paint, um, is a descriptor, so that you are, the direction, the, um, the, the, sometimes the speed, can be integral. Um, that you might just do something very direct and simple. You might do something wonderfully more explored, but you really are making, try, trying to really be responsible to, to the different areas. Um, for instance, this same, being more or less the same inspiration from a Van Gogh. Um, you can see how Jan's and my piece are very, very similar. Mine is much uh, hastier, and um, and because it's one color, you sometimes see different things with just more or less one color. Um, so there we are. That is the uh, impulse of the brush. That you, uh, let me just say one other thing. And this, if if can be a totally separate thing, or if you see that it pertains into the setups that you and want to do today. Um, think about these lines, 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 directions, the pattern, the uh, articulation of the artichoke face, or whatever. Keep those things in your mind. Yeah. Say, um, I read that 800-page biography of Van Gogh that came yeah. out a few years ago. Yeah, I did. One of his influences was the fact that when he was working for his uncles, 
gallery instead of helping customers. He would spend all the time in the back looking at all the prints and memorize them. He had a very strong visual very, memory. Very, yeah. And he, when he started drawing, he was self-taught. That's why he used hatch marks and you know, he, he sort of echoed what he saw from studying all the oh. prints and then it carried over. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And so, which is using the color, literally the color that you find in line, and uh, you know, it's not necessarily that it has a specific color, you know, purple, blue, but it creates a color by doing, as you say, uh, cross hatching, um, stippling. Um, if you look for the, he does just about everything. There are a couple of really wonderful. Yes wild examples I think I have, uh, I made copies of. So if you do nothing more than just to marvel at him, uh, that's, a, that's enough. But if you, um, if you carry it into something so that, because um, there are people who have, who, I, th I think I also say in this handout, that drawing is, is an underpinning. Uh, and sometimes it gets evaporated. You never see it once the painting is on top of it. But it is also an underpinning in the sense of that energy, that direction, that whatever, which is one reason sometimes your drawing is bad, better than your finished work, because it may have much more of your descriptor.